Once Upon a Time In. Hollywood is the latest film by Quentin Tarantino and Once Upon a Time In. Hollywood is clearly Once Upon a Time the cinema, at least the cinema I met. For a generational fact I was lucky to live straddling the old cinema and the new cinema and fortunately also the brand new cinema. 1969 is a magical, particular era. Europe is full of ferment, of student movements and French May. In America there was the Barclay Uprising and there is a whole series of other ferments. Even the cinema is affected by it, however, it is affected late and Tarantino's film focuses precisely on this moment when the heavy old cinema no longer knows how to go on and the characters he describes played with much irony and lots of fun by Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt represent the epigons of that cinema based mainly on large productions that start to get tired. And on the flourishing of television series which will then create the great crisis of true cinema, that of the great traditions, of DeMille. Of Colossi, of Peplums it is a time of crisis for Hollywood also because there is European cinema that immediately after the war revived and it is unleashed. Offering new products, offering a different genre, Sergio Leone's westerns, are mythological films that completely change with a game of irony and with the strongman. Who were the first superheroes that we see in the films of Hercules, of Macy's Day, incredible characters who fought and filled theaters with their heroic deeds, bombastic, exaggerated, yet ironic and amusing, that dragged people. They were like cartoons played by real actors. So American cinema is affected by this crisis and Quentin Tarantino photographs this moment using two suggestive characters. The actor who has not made the boom yet, a mediocre actor, of medium importance who works and his double who is Brad Pitt. The two form a couple as it happens very often because the actor and his double are practically the ego and the alter ego. And therefore they go around just like Don Quixote and Sancho Pancha in this Hollywood that is experiencing this crisis. The arrival of the novelty is told by the fact that in the next house comes Polanski, that is, Europe arrives, European cinema and while they have an old Cadillac, Polanski has a vintage MG. Suggestive and fun, while they still go around together, Polanski goes with Sharon Tate and has the largest and most beautiful house. He is the new advancing and they are entrenched in habits, in drinking, in the first spinels and they keep repeating themselves constantly. Tarantino makes a series of entourages in which he tells, as if they were short films, the adventures of this our protagonist. That clashes with a new generation of actors. There is a diabolical child, a small actress with whom DiCaprio has a very long dialogue and she even teaches him acting methods. There is the director who, despite the repetitive scheme of the Western movie, try to invent new things but unfortunately he is a mediocre director, there is Bruce Lee appearing carrying a breath of martial arts and then he is the metaphor of Asian cinema trying to clash with Hollywood and, in fact, Brad Pitt seeks to give a lesson to Bruce Lee with his stuntman character. There are different situations, bars, there are the places where you meet in. There are above all the ferment of an America which is approaching dangerously more and more to drugs and there is this famous ranch. 
where once the classic westerns were shot which is now in the hands of Charles Manson and his followers with these spirited and lost girls. This group of young beauties vote for a form of perverse Satanism that you still do not understand, but guess what? As if they were ghosts of an age that will have to come with all its dangers and all its risks, it is like what Polanski told in Rosemary's Baby, was really hovering on the new Hollywood. And there is also a funny reference to Italian spaghetti westerns, there are even invented posters of our own spaghetti westerns, including one with the direction of Corbucci. There is talk of Stevio Massi and of that series of directors that I knew and worked for, who then hired American actors maybe a little outdated, that we called those gone bad, who, however, were still high-sounding names. And for a few lire they came to Italy and starred in the films as protagonists and we could resell their names on foreign markets and above all on Asian and South American markets. As if they were colossal. The film tells exactly one of these episodes with DiCaprio that even goes to Rome to shoot. But all this though is like if it was the cover of something more terrible, more diabolical, because below there is boiling. The madness of Charles Manson and this madness hovers around Polanski's house, which is attached to our protagonist's house. But Tarantino with his ability to wrong foot, also in this case, instead of ending with what could be the tragic ending, has a happy and extraordinary invention. Completely overturning everything, leaving only this spectral aura hovering like a warning, that actually fails to block the film, which suddenly settles into a playful and surreal quality, as if it were a great absurd screen, with a happy end in perfect Hollywood style, old Hollywood style, not new Hollywood style. I was lucky to be just then in the United States and it was the moment when there were movie brats, that is the brats of the cinema who actually were people called Spielberg, Lucas, Scorsese, De Palma, Coppola, then brats in a manner of speaking. It was just the cinema crisis due to the advent of TV and to the European cinema arising again with important authorial features and also with low-cost commercial products of great impact with the public, as the Peplos and the Italian Westerns were, just this crisis had given the chance to the brats to come out into the open presenting new features, new forces, new directors, a rereading of the detective story. It is the age of Callahan, a rereading of the Western, Sam Peckinpah with the Wild Bunch, so much harder and much stronger. There are new protagonists, there is De Niro with troubled issues so the star is no longer the glossy actor such as Rock Hudson. But he is a troubled everyday man. There are also new themes, facing sex, facing troubles of ethnic minorities is in Little Big Man with another actor far away from the stereotypes of classic Hollywood like Dustin Hoffman or like Woody Allen. Faces that bear imprinted everyday life mark and which therefore give new strength to the movie brats of New Hollywood. At that time I was in Hollywood, so I saw the film very nostalgically. Places, cars, signs from which I, boy from Trastevere ended up in Hollywood, was very impressed. There is a funny anecdote with a famous Italian producer who I had met at Musso and Frank a famous steakhouse on Hollywood Boulevard where I was at dinner with an important agent, as I had a small reputation because 
con un agente importante perché avevo una piccola fama in quanto I had written a movie with Kirk Douglas and therefore I enjoyed a very small prestige being a European screenwriter who had written a story for a Hollywood star. This Italian producer asked me for help to contact through this agent a famous actress that he wanted to take to Italy. And so together we invited her in this classic Hollywood restaurant with boiseries and booze, looking like the Great Gatsby's restaurant. We courted this actress all evening, I helped the producer tell the story and we sympathetically fascinated her. Because she asked us to get her to the hotel. The producer showed his Ferrari Daytona 365 GT a car that today costs $700 per $800,000. And even then it was worth a lot splendid. Since it was a spider, I was shrunk in their midst and we went to the Chateau Marmont, this hotel on Sunset Boulevard which is a copy of the castle of Ambois, a bad copy with this French flavor. It is a famous hotel where Jim Morrison threw himself out of a window. Where unfortunately John Belushi died, where also Tarantino later shot some scenes. It is a very typical Hollywood hotel. And we accompanied this actress who invited us to go to her room to drink something. Clearly at this point I took a step back. And I told the producer that it was better that he should go because he had to convince her and then he was a charming man and so it was up to him to do this. While I go with the actress, what do you do? I am going with the Ferrari Daytona how, with my Ferrari? Of course my friend, you go with the actress. And I do not know how it will end, but anyway you go inside her room, do you want to give me at least the consolation prize? Reluctantly the producer, while going with this fabulous actress, left me the car keys and with this Ferrari Daytona, dream of a whole youth and still a beautiful dream today. I slipped along the 24 miles of Sunset Boulevard up to the Pacific Palisades and I saw the Don, while he probably was in the arms of the actress. I was in the arms of the Ferrari Daytona the actress did not make the film but I had the Ferrari and I lived my forbidden dream anyway. And with this forbidden dream of when. Once upon a time there was Hollywood and when once upon a time there were the Ferrari Daytona that you could have, I greet you and thank you.